All set? Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you all for for coming today. We appreciate it. My name is Jim Lyons. I'm a state representative from Andover, and I'm here with um, Representative Mark Lombardo from the Ripper, Representative uh, Shauna O'Connell from Taunton, <coughs> Representative uh, Jeff Deal from Whitman, and Sheriff Tom uh, Hodgins, um, and also Representative Joe McKenna. Uh, Joe, where are you from? Webster. Webster. Thank you very much. So first of all, as I said, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. And the reason that we're here today is because, as everyone knows, the Supreme Judicial Court in Massachusetts came down with a ruling uh, several days ago which prevents uh, local law enforcement officials from cooperating in, uh, with federal immigration authorities. And what, what we'd like to do is um, go over the bill just for a minute so everybody understands I'll go over the ruling for a minute so everyone understands exactly what took place. So according to the state Supreme Court, the reason that this ruling came down was no single party who filed an amicus brief was able to cite a Massachusetts statute that authorizes a Massachusetts police officer or court officer directly or indirectly to arrest in circumstances based on a federal civil immigration detainer. Simply put, the SJC said there is no statute in Massachusetts that allows that. However, in part of the rulings and arguments that was made, the United States asked us to hold that offices in Massachusetts have inherent authority. So that's what the Massachusetts amicus brief asked them to do. And what they referred to is to carry out the detention request made in a federal civil immigration detainers, essentially to make arrests for federal civil immigration matters. And they relied on a case called Santana versus Garcia. And it specifically states that state and local police officers have implicit authority to investigate and arrest for civil violations of federal immigration law and criminal violation, absent any law to the contrary. So what's clear in this ruling is there is no law on the books per the SJC, and there is also federal law that appears to override the authority. Further in the ruling it states, the prudent course is not for this court to create and attempt to define some new authority for court officers to arrest in heretofore that has been unrecognized and undefined. The better course is for us to defer to the legislature to establish and carefully define that authority if the legislature wishes that to be the law of this commonwealth. And that's why we're here today, because clearly our communities want to make sure that public safety has all of the tools. What community? Keep hate out of our state. 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 Folks, I appreciate the fact that you came. I'm not going to interrupt you. Please do not interrupt me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, ma'am. The immigrant community is also part of the Massachusetts community. We will start. Thank you so much. After I'm finished, please be respectful. I will be respectful. You're inter for interfering. You are interfering with our press conference which we're going to do in a very specific manner. I'm going I'm to interrupt. I'm going to listen. Thank but if you say racist stuff against our community, we're going to what react. Does the bill do? What does the bill do? It specifically gives authority to our local police officers to enforce federal law. The people of Massachusetts deserve to have their community safe, and we believe that this is incumbent upon us as a legislature. All people in Massachusetts. And as a matter of, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, one of the things that we're requesting 
is that the Democratic Party in Massachusetts understand that this public safety is one of the responsibilities of local authorities. That is one of our first and ultimate responsibilities. The Democrat, Democratic Party in Massachusetts is able to get things done quickly. Every day that they refuse to address the underlying safety of our communities, they are putting our citizens at risk. In January of this year, the legislature, under the direction of Speaker DeLeo and Speaker Rosenberg, in less than 48 hours, pushed through a 55% pay increase. What we are demanding is that this legislature look at this bill and determine that the public safety of Massachusetts citizens is paramount, and we would urge them, urge them to pass this legislation. I'm now going to turn this over to um, the sheriff, and the sheriff is going to have some comments. Get paid out of our state. Get paid out of our state. Get paid out of our state. Sheriff, you ready? There you go. We're going to ask everyone not to ask any questions until all of the speakers have spoke, and we would respectfully request that you not interrupt our press conference. You have plenty of time afterwards to speak. Thank you, sir. Give hate out of our state. Can you hear you? Give hate out of our state. Good morning. Before I offer my remarks, let me just remind you and the other protesters who are here that the First Amendment affords every one of us the opportunity to be heard, not to be interrupted. You have your forum to speak, but do not interrupt our constitutional right to express our, to, excuse me, ma'am. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Well, you can express that after we're done. Ma'am. I've been criminalizing the immigrant community yeah, honor, for years. Rights, excuse me, you are the one who is not honoring the U.S. Good Constitution. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to start this morning by thanking the members of the legislature who I'm partnering with to draft and file this bill that will restore law enforcement's right to collaborate with our federal partners in our shared mission to keep the citizens and the legal residents of the Commonwealth safe. As you, as you know, as you know, this week, the SJC came down with a decision that forbids local and state law enforcement, including court officers, from holding an illegal, illegal immigrant on an ICE detainer. Since when, in the United States of America, do we need to give the state of Massachusetts, or any other state for that matter, permission to cooperate with the federal government to hold someone who has violated our laws and has no legal status to be in the United States. And there is legal precedent in this country to support ICE detainers. We know of two recent New York Supreme Court decisions where it has been upheld that the law enforcement, that law enforcement has the right to hold someone on an ICE detainer because detainers are, quote, justifiably means of cooperation. My goodness. How many more families have to lose loved ones because courts and or government officials continue to look for obstacles to prevent law enforcement agencies from working with one another to keep the public safe? I want to just tell you two quick, very important examples that underscore the importance of this legislation. I want you to imagine that the attacks on the World Trade Center have not yet happened. Yet? 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 A trooper driving up 95 from Maryland stops one or two of these terrorists, runs them through the computer, and a hit comes back and says ICE has an interest in these individuals to hold them because they have some information these individuals may be associated with some other people who may be looking to do harm to the legal residents and the citizens of our country. Under this Supreme Court ruling, I mean the SJC ruling, those officers would not be allowed.
to hold those people on the ice detainer. Think about this. They're released, and close to 3,000 people are about ready to be murdered by those He's individuals. He's saying that all of us are criminals. Is that right? No. Are immigrants criminals, all of them? No. 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 Keep I, hate out of our state. Keep hate out of our state. And I would like to also share with you one other compelling situation that just happened recently. A Washington state trooper. In the state of Washington, which is a sanctuary state, was called to respond to an accident scene. He arrived on the scene, ran both driver's licenses. One of them came back and said, this driver has been convicted of a serious felon, felony. He's been deported. Contact ICE. The trooper contacted ICE. ICE said, I'll be, we'll be there in five minutes. They arrived at the scene, arrested the individual, and took him in for deportation proceedings. When the officer arrived at work the next morning, the trooper, he was informed by his supervisor he was under investigation for notifying ICE. Think about that. So this trooper had one of two choices when he got this call. Arrive on scene, got the information to contact ICE, uphold his oath and his promise to the people that he would do everything he could to protect them, and contacted ICE. Or ignore the notification to contact ICE, commit a felony under Title VIII, Section 1324, and let the person go off into the sunset, committing a felony under federal law. So the officer had, as I said, two choices. One, do your job, uphold your oath, and be disciplined, or commit a felony and undermine the oath that you took to the people. Those were his two choices. Ladies and gentlemen, Keep this is not- out of our state. Keep out of our state. Keep out of our state. <laughs> This is not the America that our forefathers created for us. No, we are a country of laws. Ma'am, 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 I'm not going to ask you again Sir? to stop interrupting me while I'm giving my statement. I'm not going to ask you again. You have to stop criminalizing me. Ma'am, you're going to be removed. I had the right to be here. You have the right to be here. You have the right to be here. I had the right to be here. But you're interrupting his press conference. I had the right to be here, sir. And you know that. I do know that. they know that, too. They do. But why are you interrupting them? Because I am a protester. I am a protester. Let them make their comments. I hope you understand that. I do understand it. I'm just telling you. You're interrupting my work, too. No, this isn't your work. Yes, you are. Of course. I'm defending the rights of people that they have been criminalizing for years. And we're tired. We're tired of you criminalizing our communities just because we are brown, just because we are people of color, and we are tired. You're saying that all of us are criminals. That's what you're saying. We I'm going to finish my, 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 uh, my statement. Um, I, I think Give us the I, I think I, I, Give us the I think I think I have made clear uh, the two examples that uh, most Americans and legal residents who have come here the right way clearly understand. Um, <laughs> We are not going to send a message to people that when you follow the laws in the United States of America, you respect the laws and wait your turn and come here legally, that somehow you're a fool, that you should sneak in, ignore our laws, and that it's okay. We are not gonna create a special class of people in America that are gonna be forgiven of being accountable for our laws. I wanna thank Representative Lyons uh, for spearheading this legislative initiative, along with Representative O'Connell and Lombardo Deal and Representative McKenna and the other representatives who, have, who ha have and will sign on to sponsor this important bill that will make sure all levels of law enforcement in Massachusetts maximize every tool available, including holding illegal immigrants on all ICE detainers to ensure public safety. The fundamental responsibility of government is to keep our citizens and legal residents and our nation safe. Keep this bit. This bill will guarantee 
that when ICE has expressed an interest in having someone being detained by local law enforcement, they will not be released back into the community where they may pose a threat or repeat the hardships we've seen time and time again in this country. This bill sends a clear message that Massachusetts is no longer a safe haven for people who violate our laws by entering our country illegally and will serve instead to honor the rule of law and those who have continued to and, and honor those who have and continue to respect our laws by following the legal immigration process to receive their citizenships. Thank you very, very much. Be paid thank, out of thank our you, state. Be paid out of our state. Be paid out of our state. Thank you, uh, uh, Sheriff. Uh, Representative Lombardo will speak next. Representative Lombardo, thank you. Thank you, Representative. My name is Mark Lombardo, State Representative from the town of Ulrica. You know, this week was, uh, was an unusual week for me. Uh, I found myself agreeing with Somerville Mayor Joe Cortoni. And our agreement was on this. As a result of the SJC ruling, we both agree that Massachusetts is now a sanctuary state. And I believe this is absolutely the wrong ruling, but absolutely the wrong direction for Massachusetts. That's why I'm happy to sponsor this legislation to take any ambiguity out of the ruling and the laws within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now I want to tell you a little bit about my family because I see signs here that say I support immig immigrants. I'm a third generation American. My grandparents, my great grandparents came over on Ellis Island from Italy and they followed the laws of the land to come into America legally. I support legal immigration. My colleagues support legal immigration. What we don't support is the breaking of our federal immigration laws. And we believe it simply Keep flies in the face of common sense to not allow our local state. and police to work with our government. The irony, keep ignorance out. Yeah, you can't yeah, even have basic ignorant. respect for somebody who disagrees with you. you. And you know, this is very common, very, very common to the left. You don't know. You have no idea to. about how the immigration system is right now. And how your family migrated to the U.S. years ago, decades ago, was very different. Yes. I hope you can You're read right. a little bit more right. about your own You're laws. You should, right. be, you should be reading. My family you followed the laws reading. of the land. And I appreciate that that may not be your position. But that's the position it's that we take. It's a change that you as a policy makers don't uh, know there yeah. are immigration laws in the U.S. It's very a change. Thank you very much, Genuine. Representative. Give hate once out again, of our state. Give hate uh, out of our state. Once again, folks, we appreciate everyone here that's being respectful and understanding what we asked you to do, which was give us an opportunity. We called this press conference. We are glad that these people came. We would ask them to be respectful like everybody else. They can ask questions at the end. For some reason, they think by shouting over us, that's gonna silence us. Make it crystal clear, no, you will not no, silence no, us. Okay. Representative O'Connell, thank you. Keep hate out of our state. Keep hate out of our state. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. And I wanna thank Sheriff Hodgson in particular for being here and for all the previous work that he has done on the immigration issue. And I want to thank Rep. Lyons for bringing us all together uh, to fix the travesty that has been caused by this ruling. This ruling ties the hands of all law enforcement officers, and it prohibits them from doing their job, which is to keep our communities safe. It makes Massachusetts a safe haven for illegal immigrants. It opens the floodgates and it says, if you come here, you get a get out of jail free card. Give hate and ignorance. Give hate out of our state. Give hate out of our state. So imagine that there is an illegal immigrant who is a drug trafficker peddling his poison in our community. Are you imagining he has facts? Do you have facts? Give us the facts. Thank you for saying that 
please, 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 please. Keep hate out of our state. 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 Would you please stop interrupting? If you stop. No, we have. No, you don't run. You're, you're not the boss here. Oh, you're not the boss too. I've asked you to be polite. I've asked you to be polite. I've asked you to be polite. We've set up ground rules. Everyone else is following them, but you. I would ask you once you can speak all you want when you're recognized. Thank you very much. You're being very disrespectful. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. You're also being disrespectful with our communities for decades, for years. That's why we're here. Are you going to let us speak? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, I will begin again. Imagine that there is an illegal immigrant who is trafficking drugs in our neighborhoods, poison that kills our children, heroin and fentanyl. He gets arrested and he's able to make bail. Our law enforcement officers have to let this criminal back onto the street even if there is an ICE detainer for him. He gets to walk out that door, go back into our neighborhoods, and continue committing crimes. This ruling only adds to the opiate epidemic that is ravishing our entire state and our community. Are we an opiate epidemic puts, in Massachusetts? No. no. Tell me, are we not? No. This ruling puts law enforcement officers in jeopardy. It puts our communities in jeopardy. And I think it is an outrage that anyone in Massachusetts, within state government or out of state government, would think that this ruling is a victory. The only one victorious here are illegal immigrants who commit crimes. So the SJ ruling, SJC ruling also pointed out that there is no statute uh, on this issue. And that's exactly what we are doing here. We are creating a statute so that law enforcement officers can do their jobs, can keep our families safe, our community safe, our children safe. This issue is not Republican.